And she was like, no way, man. I just want that one time with Audrey. Audrey is way too hardcore for me. <laughs> I gotta try to, um, I need to see if she'll go with me again because that was, that was pretty fun. She has like the right hand position and uh, yeah, it was good. Yeah, dude, rock climbing is the best. Okay, so um, hello everyone. This is Audrey Yu, the famous oval player from, well, <laughs> Buffalo, but kind of from Dallas also. And also from ESM. Yeah. ESM. Oh, wait. I have a foam finger. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. Is that from graduation? Yeah. Yeah, it is. <laughs> oh, man. Um, cool. So we're going to talk a little bit while we make these reads. The object is to make a 15-minute read. So we'll be doing that together. And then we'll just, like, horse around a little bit talk about remaking stuff. I'm going to try to show this angle of remaking of here, but no promises if it turns out great. If not, sorry, team. <laughs> um, yeah. Do you have any any input there, Audrey? No. Let's uh, let's make these reads, see okay, what well, happens. I'm going to pull up a timer here. So do you want to, I don't know. Oh, you know, I should probably get an oboe. Oh, yeah, get your oboe. Okay. Dust it off. Okay, we got 15 minutes on the timer. So we're starting from, from blanks, right? Yes. Okay. Because I did this with uh, one of the girls at UT, and I started from a, from a piece because I didn't realize we were supposed to start from a blank. So I'm pretty terrible. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Wait, you did it from a piece in 15 minutes? I tried. I gave it a shot. <laughs> Danny Cruz. All right. When, you ready? I think so. We'll see three, what happens. All right. Three, two, one, go. All right. So, Audrey, I hope it's not too distracting, but I'm going to ask you some questions while we scrape here. Oh, my. <laughs> All right. Number one, what kind of music are you listening to lately? Um, I don't know. I've always had like a really weird mix. Like I often will listen to dubstep, which is really weird. Really? Um, and, and I'll um, mix it in with some Sibelius because right. <laughs> they pair really nicely, apparently. Um, but I don't know. I've been listening to some odd podcasts that I can't particularly remember. <laughs> um, yeah, so I guess that doesn't really answer your question, but I guess I guess some more of that. Yeah. What are like some EDM? Wait, you said dubstep. Sorry, right? Yes. Okay, I'm not that familiar with dubstep, but what are like some go-to artists if I wanted to learn about dubstep? Oh goodness, I don't really know if I know that much about it, but I listen to. Uh, I think my person I listen to is called Black Mill. Oh, okay. Um, they have some pretty nice bass lines. I mean, honestly, I'll. Like I'm pretty picky if they they have to have like a pretty solid baseline, something really interesting, um, versus like a, a lo-fi type of thing. Okay. But... So no lo-fi here. Awesome. <laughs> what have you been listening to? Um so Shelsakovic has these like little chamber pieces, like chamber orchestra pieces that mm -hmm. I really like lately. I did not like them at first, but they came on my playlist once when I was running. And they're much better when you're not running. They're not good. It's not good running music. <laughs> uh, so that actually. Okay. Did you ever listen to like pop punk when you were like in high school and stuff? Pop punk? Is that like All American Rejects? Green Maybe. Day? That's, I don't know. Okay. Maybe it's like pop alternative rock. I don't know. It's hard to categorize these things. I'm thinking like of the flavor of like Blink 182 or Sum 41. Okay. Are you familiar? Whoosh. That's the, it's going over my head, but I tend to live under a rock. So like, I bet it was like a super cool. Well, they're like older. I mean, we're pretty similar in age though. So <laughs> <laughs> anyway, there's like a new generation of that kind of music that I've been listening to. And oh. it's so angsty and like teenagery. Ooh. <laughs> cool. Yeah, it's it's pretty. It's good. For, that's good for running because it's very yeah. like unsophisticated. 
Yeah, she really gets you amped up. You, you just ran a marathon, right? Yeah, did I tell you about that? You did. Oh my gosh, I was like trying my best not to tell people. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's something to like shout at people because like, what? Did you just decide to like run? one day to well i mean you know <laughs> no, i didn't like forrest gump it you know <laughs> 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 no forrest gump but did you just do like your own marathon or was it like part of like a like what was it part of so i signed up for the san francisco marathon but it's very much like do like diy marathon you know like they didn't really support you at all so cool. Cool. Yeah, I just like practiced for it for like, I think I did a, it was supposed to be a 12 week program, but I, I didn't decide to do it until like 11 weeks out. So I had to like adjust it a little bit. Gotcha. Yeah. Uh, wow. But yeah, I just like got a huge thing of gate or I got the powdered Gatorade actually. And like mix it with water and just set up my little like caches along my route. <laughs> I thought you were just going to say that you just poured the powder into your mouth and were like, oh my God, <laughs> beasting it. I poured the powder in my mouth and immediately exploded. Yes. <laughs> oh my God. Were, were you in the running? I don't remember. Um, I, oh God, I like kind of am. I actually, after you told me that you ran a marathon, I started running again, which has been pretty fun. Wow. Buffalo running. Yes. That's it's nice. great. You, uh, yeah. It's damp, a little snowy, so that gives some adventure. You're not really yeah. sure if you're going to fall on your face or not. Oh, my gosh. But it's been pretty fun. And by that, I mean, like, I feel like I'm always dying. But, you know, like, after after the run, it feels great. Like, really nice. I bet. You probably feel like a, an Iron Maiden once again. <laughs> <laughs> but Audrey is super athletic. She just finished uh, Insanity. The whole thing. None of that, like, Cavsies nonsense. Mm-hmm. I did. Yeah, that was... That was something. I recommend it if... Um, well, if you're into that kind of thing. It's it's, it's definitely... <laughs> if you're insane. <laughs> it's, it's hard. The second month comes around, and they're, like, almost an hour long, and you get, like, in, like, 10 minutes in, and, like, I would sometimes just start, not crying, but just being, like, oh, my God, I've done the warm-up, and I'm exhausted, and Did stuff you ever, like that. Mm -hmm. Were you ever in doubt that you wouldn't quit? Oh, yeah. I mean, like, every day. Really? Oh, wow. <laughs> every single day. Yeah, but I did it as, you know, when we went into quarantine, and I was, like, well, I don't really have an excuse not to do it, so I just did it. And I did not throw up. I would like to say that I did not throw up any of the days, which is like a big accomplishment for me. But... Wow. So that was pretty exciting. But my new plan, I don't know why, I decided to do, I, I want to train to be able to do a one-armed push-up. Oh. Like my new thing. Calisthenics. Yeah. We'll see. There's a lot of abs involved. Like, 90% abs involved apparently from what I've read but um, are you gonna push with your stomach how are you gonna do the push-up no. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually just one big crunch uh <laughs> no you like I I think most of it like most of the stability comes completely from your core right and then you kind of like collapse into your almost your shoulder um to actually do the push-up but yeah can you do archer no, push-ups? We'll archer push up Uh, can you describe them? Uh, I'm not sure. Okay, if, if anyone doesn't know what it is, just look it up on Google right now. <laughs> it's hard. Yeah. It's like you have your arms wide, but you like switch from one arm to the next. So you're like oh on the floor, God. you know what I mean? Do archers do that? I think it just makes you look like an archer. When you do it oh i was gonna say i actually i i am an archer so i was oh that's right audrey <laughs> is an archer i forgot like, <laughs> Maybe I should get on a hardcore archer. <laughs> like not only are you the only archer i know you're like the most hardcore archer i know <laughs> <laughs> thank you i'm honored oh, Danny, we'll see what happens with this read. I, uh, I'm super excited to hear it. It sounds good already when you're peeping it. 
Oh, I don't know. I um, my gouge has been out for like months because I I just. Oh, you were saying you were working on it yesterday. Is that right? I did. Yeah, I finished it at midnight. So. Okay. So tell us about it, because like I, nobody here knows what what gouge you got or like what's going on with your guy situation. Ooh. Okay. Well, I have a. Now, hang on one second. Okay. Okay, go ahead. Gouger. Okay, I use the Kuna Bear Gouge um, 11 millimeter bed for any of those techies out there. And I, what happened was um, I like the screw, the set screw that holds the blade into the, the carriage. Um, I had completely like stripped the top slot that you actually put the, oh, the dear. Like, driver into. Yeah. And I, I couldn't tighten it anymore. It would just, it would kind of tighten, but not like to the point where it would act as a set screw. Right. So I've never seen that screw before. And I, um, Tried to, I contacted Kuna Bear and they were so nice. They, you know, sent everything over. They like free of charge and oh wow, they got lost in the mail. So <clears throat> I went into like a four hour online um, search for what kind of screw it is. And it turns out it's called a cheese head screw because the top of it looks like a block of cheese. Oh my gosh, that's funny. So, a cheese head screw. I thought you were going to say, is it called a cheese head screw? Because it's from Wisconsin. No, it's only. <laughs> oh, man. Well, I'm glad you got it fixed. Thank you. Me too. I mean, we'll see. This is actually my test read off of it. I haven't been able to try it yet, so. Oh, well, it sounds like it's vibrating. <laughs> we'll see. Ah. I've been using this cane. So, I don't know if, if you Do you use Rigotti cane still? Ah, yeah, actually, this is Rigotti Cane. So this is Rigotti Cane too, but it's not the usual supplier that I use. I usually use Woodwind Brasswind. Yeah. But they've been out of stock, so I, I bought it from this guy. <laughs> and <laughs> Your I, cane dealer? Well, I don't know why. It's, like, so much less dense than I'm used to, you know? Oh. It's like Rigatti. I mean, it's not that consistent to begin with, but like, you come to expect a certain feel, right, to the scrape. Yeah. I wonder. Oh, I got a really interesting batch. Um, like, uh, I don't even remember. Like a couple months ago. I'm not even sure what batch, it, like what month it was created, but it was really odd. It was very stringy. Stringy. Like, yeah, that's kind of what I'm yeah. dealing with right now. Maybe it's just you know left like part of that same batch. Ugh. What happened that year? <laughs> <laughs> but I did. I went to Capital Cane, and I bought like a buttload of cane. Um, and by that I mean I bought like two brands instead of one brand. <laughs> and I'm trying the Gies Cane. I think that's how you pronounce it. G H Y S Gies. Um, okay. And it seems really nice. Like the color is beautiful. The consistency of when you're actually processing it is really nice. So. Oh, wow. I'll let you know how that one goes because yeah, it's, it looks really pretty. Yeah, cane is a fickle thing, right? Mm -hmm. But yeah, I'd be interested to find another source if if you have something to recommend. <laughs> oh, something went horribly wrong. <laughs> so where is your uh, little rod from? Oh, this? Mm -hmm. My 12 inch. Well, it has kind of an inappropriate name. It's like a uh, sword. But it is a sword. I made fun of my teacher, Erin Hannigan, for like months because she wanted me to get it. And I was like, I that is ridiculous. I am not buying and carrying this thing around. And no. actually, she, well, I bought it in secret. Oh, really? <laughs> she doesn't know? Yeah, I did tell her I had it for like oh my gosh. a long time, That's and so then funny. I think I think someone in our studio eventually let it slip, and then I I yeah, she's they right. ratted you out. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's like a, it's like a foot and a half long, so that there isn't really any subtle way of using it. It's like a foot and a half long, is it really? <laughs> it's it's pretty long. Oh my gosh! But it is called unless I mean, 
It's up to you. It's it's called a um okay, it's called a 12 inch micro dick, spelled exactly how you would spell it. Um I don't <laughs> I don't know why. I think that's like a it's it's for like a, a kitchen knife sharpening type mm -hmm. term. But uh, <laughs> Yeah. That's a ridiculous name. That it, it is. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, we're back in business. Okay. Oh, let me check the timer. Ooh, Audrey, we got a minute and 33 seconds. Okay. Let's see if this gouge is working. Sounds good to me. Clip it on up. A little Clippy, Clippy McClipperson? <laughs> Just a little Mc, McClipper. So like, I don't know. I can't get that warmth in there. Um. Okay. Wait. We want to check this timer. Ooh, thirty seconds. Oh my god. Wait. Do we have to play like Don Juan after this? Oh, we didn't even decide. What do you? I mean, yeah. Play anything. You. I don't have Don Juan memorized, but we can play oh, Don Juan, I guess. Uh, what else can we play? Uh, Scala or something. <laughs> Oh, Scala. Oh, Danny, you're the only one who could just whip that out of their pocket. Oh, my God. It's not true. <sighs> oh. Okay. All right, how about, like... Oh, you know, we should play some Christmas song. Oh, okay. I got one more scrape in here. Hang on. Bloop. All right. All right, let's see. Uh, what do I got? Okay, eyebrows. Oh dear. Uh huh. No, <laughs> like, they're awesome. I forget what comes next. Okay, your turn. <laughs> no, that's not what I meant. Um, I don't know. Uh, can I get up that high? I'm gonna try to. Do, um. All right, we'll see if this happens. Okay. Wait, wait, Audrey, Audrey, is the original sound on? I, I don't know. Why your your oboe was too, it was too amazing for the Zoom. It, it cut out. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's probably a good thing if I'm honest. All right, let's, let's hear that Tchaikovsky again. Yeah, that was awesome. Okay, meeting seat, uh, close, blah, 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 blah. I think it's on. It should be on. Okay. Oh, oh, no, it's not on. Enable original sound. All right, let's do it. Right, let's this time it. for real. This time for real. Oh, Okay. That was awesome! Dude, you already blew my dreams out of the water. 
What? You already blew my jingle bells out of the water. That was amazing. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Yeah, I don't know about you, but I like screaming in the morning. So. You what? I enjoy screaming in the morning. Yeah. What was that? Was that high F sharp or what was that high note? Uh, high F sharp going to high G. High F sharp to G. Oh wow. Okay. Well, Audrey clearly making a great read in 15 minutes. I think that gouge is working. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Danny. <laughs> that was great. Okay, so um, Audrey is actually a veteran educator. Can we talk about that for a little bit? Sure, let's do it. Okay, so what are like, well, okay, let's get a little background on Audrey first. So just briefly walk me through like your teaching experience because it's, it's pretty wide ranging. All right. Okay, so my well, okay, so I start. I went to Eastman, um, and I got um, a degree in both music education and vocal performance, and then a little bit of biology on the side. And I, while there, I started teaching. Um, oh my gosh, I started teaching baby classes, which is uh, early early childhood music, which I specified. Um, like with the baby babies so like four i think it was six months and up i was basically teaching to like four month old possibly or six to like one and a half year olds um and it's actually really amazing because you see them and they're like still kind of purple because they just popped out and then um in like six weeks or something they're you know singing along babbling along to the pieces because they they're you know it's we repeat a lot so they know what to expect and they can participate so um, I did that for a lot of my time at Eastman, and it was just one of my favorite experiences. And then after that, I student taught. Um, my elementary school was Patty Hill Elementary in Rochester, New York. And my high school was my old high school here in Buffalo called Williamsville East High School. And that was amazing. Lots of, I think my immune system, like, really got a good boost after that. <laughs> a lot of weird things that I saw, but, you know, it's good. Did you and get struck throat? No, I didn't get struck throat. No, but I did have a, a student just, oh my God, I got like spat in the face because like, you know, like you hold up the flute head joint and you go blow and this girl just unleashed like a loogie onto my face. And I was like, oh, it's fine. Why don't we try the clarinet? <laughs> so, oh boy. Yeah. So oh, we, wow. We had, uh, um, and then I went to... SMU after student teaching and in SMU I in Dallas particularly actually probably most of Texas um, you can really private teach like I make all of my income um, which is you know fairly you know pretty nice for a, a graduate student by uh, just private teaching in the public schools so I have currently around ooh, I think around 30 students which is yeah, healthy great. yeah a good size studio um, and I've been doing that for about, I think, a, almost four years now, completely four years. So. Wow. Okay. So what, what, okay, let's look, like, what are, let's name three things that are like key for anyone who wants, who's thinking about like pursuing an education degree. Like if you want to do education, make sure that this is true for you. Because uh, I think a lot of people think they want to do it, but they don't realize what it's actually like. Because school's a little different than, like, real-life teaching. Yeah. I think number one for me is being completely aware and completely accepting that you are going to make a million mistakes. And you're going to make them in front of your kids. Yeah. And you're going to make them in front of your supervisors. And it's that's 1,000% okay. Um, you know, that's actually a really great experience is when I don't know something and I'm trying to figure out with my student and they help me figure it out. That's, you know, really memorable for both of us. Um, two, you know, I think it's, if you, I think a lot of the time, kind of going along the same note, um, you know, if you, you be able to, you know, kind of have, you know, have a lesson plan, but also be able to, you know, get away from it um sometimes the kid needs something else they you know they can't play something or you know they're really focusing on something else and just really meet them where they're they're at they might need to spend an entire hour going through a dotted rhythm and that's okay that's where they're at that might be where you're at too in terms of like 
how you can connect with them. Um, and then three, I think, you know, just, I think it's really easy to overthink, especially when you're performing or when you're teaching and just, you know, if you feel like, oh man, I bombed that or, <laughs> oh man, they're just, I don't have their interests at all. You're teaching band or you're teaching oboe and that's probably the highlight of their entire day. So even if you're just holding the instrument or playing a reed, that's so exciting to them. So I guess don't be discouraged by, you know, your inner demons telling you. Inner demons. Ooh, heavy. <laughs> <laughs> Getting deep. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, that's so true, though. I, I, I think a lot of a lot of the teaching thing, people don't really think of it as, as a performance, mm -hmm. but it totally is, right? Like, you have to kind of put on your teacher, like, persona when you're teaching. Yeah. It's kind of weird. <laughs> Especially at first. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I, I feel that for sure. Those are some good good tips. Good tips from Audrey. <laughs> okay, so what are some things that like have helped you as a as a private lesson teacher? And like so you have a huge studio. Um, I think Well, I mean, things that help me as a you know, doing things that the kids are interested in because, mm -hmm. you know, it, it, there is nothing worse than being at a school at 7 a.m. or even 6.45 a.m. <laughs> and forcing them to play through an etude that they are not connected to at all. Like, there is nothing worse than pulling it out of that student. So, you know, even if, I mean, you yeah, you have to do etudes, you have to do scales, but you could do them in a fun way. You know, you could find a tune and you could teach them like the Dorian scale. You could teach them the Mixolydian scale because, you know, a lot of folk tunes deal with different types of modes. Um, or you could do something fun. So maybe even just dive into um, some pop music and see what you can find. There's a lot of good stuff out there, so. Yeah, I love that. That's such good advice. And I feel like people don't, don't do that enough, you know? I, I almost think it's like a, a fear thing, right? Like, I get, yeah, to kind of pull away from stuff and kind of yeah. take the time to do other things. Yeah. Right. right, yeah. But yeah, I love that. That's such good advice for sure. It's, it's kind of funny because like Audrey and I have uh, similar uh, education philosophies, I think, just because of like where we came up, you know? <laughs> but I think Audrey is a little bit more of an education native with that kind of thing, where I, I always feel like Audrey's teaching is a little bit more um, musically rooted <laughs> than a lot of the teaching I've seen. Uh, and it's something I try to emulate, but I, I just feel like you've been doing it so much more as part of your own upbringing, right? Where it was like really hardcore about that, which I think is awesome. And I, I love to see more of that in, in the world. So yeah, thanks yeah. for sharing sharing that with us. Okay, so can we talk about tunes real fast? Because oh, sure. Audrey knows a lot of tunes. She's like a tune, a tune fiend. Oh my god, you're talking me up. I'm nervous. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, so I, I've struggled with that too. Uh, just finding rep that I th can connect with students to, you know? Mm -hmm. um, but I, I like what you mentioned. So let's name tunes in Mixolydian. So the only one I think of is Ultra Clark. That's a pretty good one. Yeah. Yeah. You could even do, I mean, you could even do the, the opening. Wait. You could, I mean, you could just make something Mixolydian if you want to. Oh, like transform the tune into Mixolydian? Yeah. 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 Ultra Clark, what else is Mixolydian? I don't know. If, honestly, I probably just would mix something up um, and see if they liked it. Okay. Um, I'm trying to think. I just did something from Lord of the... Oh, sorry, The Hobbit from someone, but I think that was in Dorian. Wait, the opening theme? No, it was the dwarves theme, but that's definitely in Dorian. Okay. Very pretty, though, but it's... Yeah. Is the opening theme... I think that's in Mixolydian, right? Mm -hmm. Is that right? Yeah. Sure. Like the three musketeers. We get a little off the rails into major there, but like. But the beginning. major, and then we go back. So we'll just. If that happens, just like tell them not to worry about it. Yeah. The tune. 
<laughs> all right yeah. all right there's what um the, the dwarf song i oh i think it's called like bum it's i think it's like um something about like it's it's talking about the lonely mountains treasures underneath it and the the dwarves ah, okay oh Hobbit. okay but this is from the hobbit movie yeah ah, i yeah. haven't seen that one it's good it's music, really yeah. good it's really good yeah. okay i'll have to check it out it's so long though isn't it it is it definitely <laughs> I, I love Tol Tolkien, or I'm not sure how to pronounce his name, but yeah. I've read a lot of his books. And The Hobbit is really cute, but it's definitely kind of like a, like, you know, like a quick burner. So it's, it was long. Yeah. <laughs> well, I just feel like, I remember when those movies came out, I was like, I think I could read the book before I finish this movie. <laughs> you know, like. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But if you said the music's good, maybe it's worth checking out. It is, yeah. I think Howard Shore is the composer. I know he's the composer for Lord of the Rings, and he is beautiful. Yeah. I mean, just you know, if you ever have the time, just listen to the soundtracks because they're beautifully scored. Yeah, for sure. I love the Lord of the Rings soundtrack. I got that CD as a kid. That was a good yeah. one. Yeah. Awesome. Okay, so talking about teaching, talking about some tunes. Okay, do you ever? Do you think you'll ever go back to like the little itty bitties? little babies yeah oh like with without a doubt yeah oh really that was okay my favorite thing to teach yeah oh my gosh they're um they are so cute i mean just like you know they'll just like sit there turn to the side throw up and then turn back and be like <laughs> like they're just wild oh my god but their parents are there too right mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> Good. It's just me and like thirty babies. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's just Andre and like thirty larva <laughs> rolling around. Worm around, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So they highly, um, uh, the program that I was working for highly uh, recommended that both parents be there, or or you know anyone who's the guardians are there, um, who mainly because the the classes half for the babies or maybe i'd say 40 percent for the babies, 60 percent for the parents or guardians just because um what's most important is that they take it home and they sing to them and they do these activities with them because um, that has to do it's it's dr it's dr donna brink fox's um has to do with her thesis um and her work her research with uh, basically, you know, as a baby, you start, you always start singing and eventually you kind of train your voice to speak. Right, right. So it's kind of, you know, if we start singing, maybe if we keep singing, we could keep our aptitude, our music aptitude, you know, as at the highest um, point that it could be, continue it as we develop. Yeah, into yeah, her research is pretty crazy, right? Like, mm -hmm. I mean, even, so I taught at this private school uh, last year, was it last year or two years ago? I was teaching band. And like one of the things I kept hearing, e even like when I was getting interviewed and hired for the job was like, they wanted to find kids who had who had talent. You know, it was like the thing. And, and like, it, and I'm sure for you too, it's like, well, no, 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 like I'm here to teach them, right? Like, and it's like, yeah, just some kids are, are talented, some kids aren't. It's like, no, 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 like the point of the classes though is like to help kids like, learn how to speak music right <laughs> like and I, I think that's undervalued right like like the the idea of aptitude and the idea of like versus the idea of innate ability right yeah I, I feel like because we wouldn't we wouldn't really necessarily think that about well maybe some people do about like math per se or like even read i don't know some people would say that i think i guess it depends on where you go but i just think music has such like a a cultural like stigma against growth yeah. <laughs> yeah i think so too and i think that you know that even could be seen in like adults today you know people who say like oh i can't sing and like yeah you know, right and you're built to sing you're you know that's that could even be a part of courtship like that you know that's totally you could totally sing you might you know you might probably haven't sung in a while but you could do it right um, and it's kind of one of those things where like, I'll leave it to the artists and it's like, well, who's really an artist is just someone who decided to do it more often than someone else. Right. Right. So, yeah. It's interesting. And that might be more specific just to our culture here. Cause I know other cultures <clears throat> sing as a part of daily life. So, right. um, right. yeah. Well, you, even like the national anthem, right. is like, 
like one person sings it here but in other countries like it would be weird if only one person sang it yeah yeah oh, okay so i have a question for you and this is also so that my students can see that it's not just me doing the thing but le private lessons yes singing oh yeah like oh <laughs> my gosh yes i have sometimes oh my, i can tell that they're nervous because like they'll look at me and then they'll start looking like off camera and I can tell that someone's like they'll also get really quiet and I can tell that someone's just walking by the window so <laughs> I have to like I have to sing extra loud sometimes like so loud that I can't even hear them but eventually I'll get a little a little peep out of it yeah yeah the yeah. Little, little murmurs mm -hmm. yeah but like even before virtual land it's weird to be in a practice room being like, all right, let's just give that voice a whirl. <laughs> <You know? laughs> exactly. Yeah. Especially, yeah. I mean, maybe a younger kid wouldn't have, when I taught elementary, it wasn't an issue. Like they want to have fun with you doing whatever. But with the middle schoolers, like they will clam up if we're not careful. Right. Like, oh Yeah yeah they're so nervous oh my gosh those poor little sweet peas yeah yeah they definitely uh, <laughs> some of them are like a-okay with it yeah. and a lot of them like i'll i'll just see their lips like kind of like uh, i'll be like are you doing it and they're like uh, uh, so yeah they'll, they'll try which i i'll i'll take that but um. no that's awesome and I, I love that you're talking about it because i i feel like it's not as common as I'd like to see, I'd li as I'd like it to be, right? And so, like, when, you, and I don't know if you've experienced this, but when you're doing it, like, I, I know the kids talk to each other, right? Like, they have to. And sometimes I feel like they don't believe me that other people do it. Because, like, the okay. trombone players might not be doing it, right? Like, yeah, no, it totally helps. I am a strong believer, even, you know, being, like, specific to oboe, like, if you can sing it, then you can play it. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Not to around necessarily, so. Oh man. Oh, so true. <laughs> oh, okay. So, uh, I think that we have covered plenty of topics. If you guys have questions for Audrey, uh, please leave them in the comments and, uh, let us know. Um, frankly, if I was commenting, I would comment on that delicious Christmas sweater you're sporting. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Let us know like what kind of read stuff you like, or if you have questions about the gouger, definitely. Uh, Audrey is super generous about answering questions, so I'm sure she'd love to... I, I'm sorry, Audrey, I don't want to speak for you, but would you be okay answering some questions for like... I love nerding out about reads and stuff, so please. So nerd out with us! All right, yeah. we'll see you guys next time on Read Making With Us, I guess. I don't know, I haven't named it yet. That sounds like a good name. Oh, yeah, yeah that's nice. <laughs> it falls off the tongue. It's nasty. Oh, snazzy. Okay, well, we'll keep it. All right. Well, thanks, Audrey. I'm going to stop the recording. <laughs> thanks, Danny.